<laughs> I'm Chris. Uh, I am an anthropologist, and I'm working on my PhD at the University of Washington. And I did the research behind 100 Years Beauty in the Philippines. Well, okay, so in the 1910s, the Philippines is still emerging out of the Spanish colonial era. American and European ethnologists were really invested in documenting indigenous women, especially their tattoos. It was very exoticized and pretty race racialized, I think. In the 1920s, Fernando Almarsolo is a painter and a Philippine nationalist. And he had a lot to say about what makes a Filipina woman beautiful. It suggests a kind of nostalgia for a simpler pre-colonial time and a simpler pre-colonial kind of woman. End of the 1920s and the 1930s up until World War II, we see all of these um, carnivals. So they're kind of like the precursor to the modern-day beauty pageant, which is a staple still in the Philippines. Yeah, they were definitely inspired by jazz age beauty in the US and in other places. So I think when, one thing you noticed with April's skin in the video from start to finish is that she has very dark skin in the beginning, and then in, immediately in the 30s, it becomes totally white. Um, so that's a, a beauty standard that gets enforced all the way up until the present moment. Of course, the sort of colonial mentality about how European aesthetics are beautiful. And then finally, towards the very end, you see her um, kind of like laying off the skin whitening products and the powders and the bleaches and all of that. Um, because I think in this moment, people are beginning to accept that their skin tone can be beautiful without needing to be whiter. My favorite look might have been the Huck Amazon um, warrior woman. During Japan Japanese invasion, during World War II, there are these women that are actually participating um, in the suppression of the um, incoming Japanese forces. So it wasn't unusual for women to be militarized um, in some of these rebel groups. Ah, in the 1960s, that lady with the huge hair, well, that's modeled after a young Imelda Marcos, who would eventually become wife of Mr. Marcos, who initiated martial law and many other uh, waves of corruption in the Philippines. In the 80s, I think you see Filipino pop culture and U.S. pop culture um, are closely analogous. Um, it's not a mistake since World War II, and before that even, the United States and the Philippines have had a close relationship. Beauty is not uh, natural. It's always conditioned. And in this context, uh, you know, a face tells so much about the political situation or a military situation. Um, and those things go into the way we condition our own face to look beautiful to the world. And the kinds of Filipino figures that people are familiar with are like maids or nurses. Um, and it's not to say that that work isn't important, but rather that there are so many different kinds of people in the Philippines, many ethnic groups and languages and etc. There is extreme wealth and extreme poverty. So I think people think of the Philippines as a pretty destitute, poor place that produces our nurses and our maids. But it's so much more than that. And there's so much of a reason why we think that.